When you first start practicing yoga, it's always recommended to have someone guide you through the asanas. It's quite possible to commit a few errors while practicing yoga asanas. Yoga poses can only be mastered with consistency but also with the right guidance. Some mistakes, however, are very minor and can easily be corrected. Today, I'm here to show you three common mistakes in three postures that can be fixed. The first one is Adhomukhaswanasan or Downward Facing Dog. This pose improves the blood flow to your brain and strengthens the bones. As a result, you'll also be able to improve your posture. If you have a wrist injury, I suggest that you avoid doing this posture. If you have slip disc or any injury in your spine or high blood pressure, please avoid this posture. Now let me show you the correct way of getting into the pose. To come into Adhomukhaswanasana, you are going to come into your kneeling position. From here, just walk your palms one palm print forward, tuck your toes, lift your knees, straighten the legs and take the hips up towards the ceiling. Keep the abdomen slightly tucked in, pressing into all five fingers. Three common mistakes that are made in Adho Mukhaswanasan are 1. Keeping the palms and the feet too close to each other. You want to keep your palms at shoulder width distance apart and your feet at hip width distance apart. The other mistake is bringing your feet in too much just to bring the heels down. It's not imperative for the heels to touch the floor but rather staying in correct alignment even if it means that your heels stay slightly raised up. And the third one being keeping the shoulders too close to the ears. You want to draw them back and down, push into the shoulders so that your neck is completely relaxed. You can stay in Adho Mukhaswanasan for up to 30 seconds before you lower the knees down. Feel free to repeat it two to three more times. The second one for today is Katarshvanasana or Dolphin Pose. Dolphin Pose strengthens your arms as well as your legs. This pose should not be attempted if you've recently suffered any back, arm or shoulder injury. Now, let's start with getting into the pose first. You can meet me in Adho Mukhaswanasan or Downward Facing Dog. And from here, you're just going to draw one elbow down towards the mat and then the other. Just like we would do in Downward Facing Dog, your legs are completely straight. Make sure that your fingers are spread nice and wide on the mat. Now, three mistakes that people often make in this posture is that they round their spine. You still want your back to be completely erect. The second mistake that people make is they take their elbows very wide apart. You want your elbows to still be right under your shoulder and your wrists in line with your elbow, making a 90 degree angle. The third mistake that people make is bending the knees. Just like you would do in downward facing dog, you still want your legs to be completely erect to get the maximum benefits out of this posture. Keep the inner and outer arms completely engaged and resist moving around too much. Hold this posture for 30 seconds before exhaling and lowering down. You can try it up to 2-3 to three times. Our last posture for today is Ashtachandrasan or Crescent Lunge. You can practice this asana to open up your shoulders, the chest and also stretch the hip flexors. In order to get the most benefit from this asana, it's important that you practice it correctly. If you suffer from vertigo or high blood pressure, I'd recommend you to not attempt this posture. The most common mistake that people make is not putting enough pressure on the toes. You want your heels to be lifted and your toes pressed into the mat. The other mistake that people make is bringing the shoulders too close to the ears. You want your shoulders to be completely relaxed, drawn away from the ears. The third common mistake that's made in crescent lunge is crossing the knee over the toes. You want the knee to stay right above the ankle making a 90 degree with your leg just to make sure that you don't injure your joints. You can hold the posture for up to 30 seconds. I hope these tips were helpful and you're able to perform the asanas with fewer errors getting the maximum benefits from the correct alignment. I hope this was useful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.